28th, April 2023. The time is 10.15 a.m. Madam Secretary, please call the roll. Thank you, and thanks for bearing with us. We started a little late. Gappy ran over, so we had to take a quick break. So thank you for bearing with us here. Uh, Director Conroy. Is absent Director Dorsey? Present. Ingardio? Is absent. Garbarino? Here. Judice? Here. Roseball? Here. Hernandez? Here. Mastin? Absent. Moulton Peters? Here. Parr? Is absent. Rabbit? Here. Rodoni? Here. Is absent. Safai? Present. Snyder? Here. Is absent. Stephanie? Present. Thier? Present. Second Vice President Hill? Here. First Vice President Cochran? Here. And President Terrio. Here. Thank you. And just for the benefit of everybody in the room, I'll remind everyone this is General Manager Dennis Mulligan. Here. <laughs> Joe Wire is our Auditor Controller. Yes. Ava Barr Furbrish. Here. Uh, Kim Manolius. Here. Dave Rivera. Good morning, President. Mona Babauta. Here. Michael Hoffman. Here. And Kelly Hopper here. behind the pole there. And that's the staff that's in the room that you've heard here from. And I just wanted to put some names and faces together. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, Director Hill, can you read us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, liberty, justice for all. We do that so much better. <laughs> <laughs> it's, yeah, it's a little more, a little more together when we, uh, when we are together. Um, so, next item on the agenda is public comment, uh, and uh, I have a couple of cards for folks who are present here. Uh, so, let me uh, start with um, David Kopel. Uh, you have three minutes, everybody. Thank you, David uh, in person, uh, in I've made most of my most introductions, of my introductions uh, uh, earlier, so I'll uh, so uh, skip that, but uh, nice, that, to, but see nice to see you all. Um, um, I would note I would that, note that this, uh, meeting uh, this meeting location is very interesting, very interesting uh, to the district. Uh, to the district. Uh, um, there's, there's a bit of history a bit that, of history I, wanted that I wanted to share. There was a Route was a... B66 um, that the district operated that ran on Sundays and holidays from the zoo across the street to Inverness. Um, two trips each direction uh, in the 70s and early 80s. I think that was the result of the uh, Golden Gate National Recreation Study, the Guggerness, um, that very few of us uh, remember. Bob David would have been able to uh, talk about that, perhaps uh, Jerome or Alan, um, uh, Don White. I mean, not, not a lot of people remember that history, but it, this was actually a terminal for a Golden Gate Transit route if you believe it. Um, I'm happy to, to bring you a copy of the uh, schedule guide uh, someday. But I thought I would uh, provide a little uh, history. I thought Mona might appreciate that as well. Um, I also wanted to uh, thank uh, publicly uh, Dana and uh, Megan in the uh, marketing uh, group. I made a suggestion a, a while back about the transit guide to include the Clipper uh, stop IDs and that happened uh, for the, the March uh, transit guide, and I think that will uh, benefit uh, riders. I suspect that probably 80 to 90 percent of the ons and offs uh, on uh, district uh, bus routes uh, occur at those uh, stops. Um, and so I, I think that's a, a great benefit. Minor change, uh, but very helpful, and, and thanks to the staff. I did not see any uh, transit guides at the meeting. I think in the future it will be great to have transit guides. We should always be uh, marketing uh, the district's uh, uh, bus and ferry services and in encouraging uh, ridership uh, increases. Um, I also wanted to uh, tag on to that just a general appreciation. There's a lot of discussion about the represented employees uh, in the district uh, and a lot of um, uh, work with labor relations and, and other uh, aspects um, related to the uh, represented employees, which are great. Uh, but I also wanted to um, support the non-represented uh, employees that uh, do a lot mm -hmm. of the uh, work that we see here today and, and behind the, the scenes. So uh, just a, a plug for the, the non-represented um, as well. Um, I made some comments uh, yesterday about a project at the toll plaza. I was wondering if the uh, general manager or staff might be able to uh, respond to those uh, comments uh, in a moment. And as I keep saying, I very much look forward to the Strategic Financial uh, Plan Advisory uh, Committee report later. 
I don't know why I'm very focused on that. I, I, I guess I just am. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for listening and nice to see you all. Uh, next we have uh, Dave Rody, Mr. Rody. Board members, managers, staff, good morning. My name is Dave Rody. I'm the San Francisco Policy Co-Chair of the Climate Reality Project. Last week, coming back from the transit funding rally at City Hall, I was on my way on, home on the Enjuta, but I decided to jump off the train to take a break in Coal Valley. There's a beautiful little park there surrounding the portal where the trains come up out of the tunnel. I sat in a small grove of sequoias with a cold beer in my hand, marveling at these sleek electric trains coming and going from downtown San Francisco. And I thought to myself, somewhere back in the mid 20th century, someone had a vision of what I'm seeing right now here in 2023. I'm not saying the SFMTA is a model of zero emissions transit, they have a long way to go. But someone decades ago envisioned this electric light rail system that crisscrosses San Francisco, and they believed in it enough to make it a reality. I urge all of you to engage in a similar vision for Golden Gate Bridge Transit. Imagine a beautiful zero emissions electric bus fleet carrying thousands of people to and from San Francisco. Imagine a whole new freight fleet of streamlined electric ferries cruising across the bay without polluting either the air or the water. Now, imagine the pride you would feel in presenting this kind of vision to Bay Area commuters. It's time to reimagine your transit system and to rebrand it. I believe that presenting a plan for a future fleet of electric buses and ferries to the public will win massive support for Golden Gate Bridge Transit. A poll conducted by the Public Policy Institute of California last year found that eight out of 10 Californians say that climate change is a serious threat to California's future economy and to their quality of life. You are in a position to offer hope. I know that you all have tremendous confidence in the management skills of Dennis Mulligan and his staff, as do I. Since there's little need for you to micromanage day-to-day -day bridge district operations, your job, I believe, is to look to the future, to think beyond next month and next year, to think about a transit system for the future, one that your children and grandchildren will be proud of. I know you're in the midst of a financial crisis. That's why, I'm at, why I attended the transit funding rally last week, and that's why we supported Senator Weiner's endorsement of the California Transit Association's $5 billion budget request in the face of Governor Newsom's budget cuts. But you need more than money to shore up existing operations. You need to dream bigger than that. Stop for a second to consider what was accomplished during the Great Depression, when the U.S. economy was the worst that it's ever been. Ten international airports were built. Eight dams, including the Hoover Dam, were built. The first freeway in L.A. was built. And oh, yeah, the Golden Gate Bridge was built during the Great Depression. Our only hope in addressing the climate crisis is to envision a better future. And your job is, as I see it, is to make it a reality. So I'm begging you, be brave enough to dream big. Thank you for listening. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have anyone uh, on the line uh, to speak? We do. We do have two speakers, I believe, and Justine, would you like to introduce the two speakers on your end? Certainly. Good morning. Our first speaker this morning is Kimberly Renee Gamboa. Gamboa, go ahead. Uh, good morning. My name is Kimberly Renee Gamboa, and I am holding one of my favorite photos of my 18-year-old son, Kyle Emerson Gamboa, smiling from ear to ear in his high school class picture. Kyle jumped off the Golden Gate Bridge on September 20th, 2013, 11.45 a.m. As the completion of the suicide deterrent nears, it is overwhelming seeing the progress being made in the installation of the net. We will always have a piece of our soul missing without Kyle, but once the suicide deterrent is complete, we are hopeful no one else will lose their loved one to the Golden Gate Bridge. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Gamboa. Um, Ms. Bach, uh, do we have, a, you said you have someone else. We do, we have one more speaker and that is Warren Wells. Warren, go ahead. Uh, thank you, President Terrio, members of the Board of Directors. This is Warren Wells, Policy and Planning Director for the Marin County Bicycle Coalition. I'm calling today to inform you that, that uh, our, our organization is asking the Bridge District to uh, 
take the step of allocating funding and planning safety improvements on Alexander Avenue. As you know, people traveling by foot or by bicycle between San Francisco and Marin must use Alexander Avenue at some point in their travel, particularly during weekday days. During the high season, the road sees thousands of people walking or biking every day. And, but despite this, the road is designed primarily with cars in mind, with wide lanes that encourage speeding, rough shoulders with vegetation impeding bicycle travel, and no sidewalks. This design has consequences. There's no mile in Marin with more injury crashes for bicyclists than Alexander Avenue. Over the past 10 years, there was a reported injury crash on this road, this one mile of road, every six weeks for the last 10 years. 16 of those crashes resulted in severe, life-changing injuries to the people um, involved. We are asking the Bridge District budget for and advance a study to develop safety recommendations for this crucial corridor uh, to reduce this, this awful toll of injuries. Uh, to demonstrate that there is widespread support for such an effort, we're in the process of collecting petition signatures, which we will present to this body um, at its May meeting. And I'll be reaching out to each of you to provide additional background information and to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you very much uh, for your service and for your time and consideration today. Thank you, Mr. Wells. I will remind you that you're gonna give me some information on a grant um, when you can. Uh, anyone else, uh, Ms. Bach? We have no other speakers this morning, thank you. Thank you. Uh, as is traditional, I will turn this over to the general manager uh, to respond to some of the comments. Thank you, Mr. President, uh, members of the board. I want to thank all the speakers today. Uh, with respect to Mr. Pilpel, I want to thank him for his thoughtful and detailed comments. He asked a specific question yesterday. Uh, the answer is 1998. The question was, when was the last time the pavement in the vicinity of the toll plaza had gone through a, a full uh, repaving project? Uh, with respect to Mr. Rohde's comments, uh, his passion and advocacy is much appreciated. And uh, we also thank him for participating in the event at the steps of City Hall, seeking advocacy for transit funding because we all face many challenges. Uh, Ms. Kimberly Renee Gamboa, we look forward to celebrating the completion of the net with you and your entire family and all your friends. Um, and then with respect to Mr. Warren Wells, uh, the Bridge District will gladly work with Marin Bike Coalition to advocate for funding and apply for grants with the Transportation Authority of Marin and the Metropolitan Transportation Commission who are the parties that we go to to receive funding for road and bike improvement projects. Um, so we look forward to working with you as we advocate to TAM and MTC uh, in those endeavors. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Mulligan. Uh, next item on the agenda is the consent calendar. Mr. President, yes. can I make a comment also, also to Mr. Wells? Um, yes. Okay, thank you. Um, in, in addition, um, uh, Chair of the Bi uh, Caltrans uh, District 4 EAC, uh, we're working with Caltrans to try to work on their part of the Alexander to get funding for the improvements. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, so then let's move along to the consent calendar. Sorry, you're um, the calendar, Mr. President. We've had the chance to review it. Uh, are there any questions, comments, or corrections on the consent calendar? I see no one offering corrections. I see a couple of heads shaking. Um, so, um, uh, is there a motion to approve the consent calendar? Mm -hmm. Motions and seconds all around the room. Uh, I'll let you harvest them. Uh, and uh, so, a roll call vote, then, please, Madam Secretary. Thank you. We have a first and second on the consent calendar, starting with Director Conroy, who's absent. Dorsey. Aye. Ingardio, who's absent. Garbarino. Aye. Judice. Yes. Grosbel. Aye. Hernandez. Yes. Mastin. Is absent. Fulton Peters. Yes. R is absent. Rabbit. Yes. Rodoni is absent. Safai. Aye. Snyder. Sorry. Is absent. Stephanie. Aye. Beer. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. 13 ayes. 13 ayes. The motion passes. Um, next item is the General Manager's Report. Uh, General Manager Mulligan. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the board, members of the public and staff. My written report is before you. I will highlight a couple items. First, it's my pleasure to announce that in April, uh, Artemis Davenport was elected to the Northern California chapter of COMPTO, the Conference of Minority Transportation Officials. Board of Directors as its Vice President for the Northern California Chapter. 
So congratulations to Artemis. And uh, Comco is very lucky to have her on their board. With respect to the status of the uh, district operations in the post-pandemic phase, I will take a couple moments to go through where we're at. Um, because there's been a lot of press coverage about the fiscal cliff, the challenging challenges facing transit agencies, and questions from legislators about what a transit agency is doing to help solve their problem for themselves. What's their skin in the game? So the bridge district is similar to a handful of other transit agencies in the Bay Area in that we're affected by downtown San Francisco. Today, there are 150,000 fewer people in downtown San Francisco each weekday as compared to pre-pandemic. Currently, the office vacancy rate in downtown San Francisco is north of 29%. And the amount of vacant office space is enough to fill more than 20 Salesforce towers. Given the state of downtown San Francisco, demand for bridge, bus, and ferry travel during commute periods is way down. Fortunately, recreation and tourist travel has mostly returned. How does that affect us? Today uh, at the bridge, uh, the morning commute period, 5 a.m. to 9 a.m., bridge traffic is down 30%. That's great for greenhouse gas emissions, uh, not so good for our bottom line. Uh, today, with respect to bus, overall bus ridership is 42% of pre-pandemic, while the number of overall bus trips we offer is 48% of pre-pandemic levels. So as we have less customers, we offer less service. As Mona talked about earlier, we offer the bulk of our regional bus service. It's virtually unchanged as compared to pre-pandemic, um, but our commute service is much, much less. The reason why is, Commute ridership on our buses is only 17% of pre-pandemic levels. So today, the number of commute trips we offer is 16% of pre-pandemic levels. Our average passenger load per bus is about the same today as it was pre-pandemic. What's different is we offer fewer trips um, because running empty buses is bad for the environment and bad for our finances. Uh, for example, pre-pandemic, looking at Supervisor Moulton Peters, a former rider, the Route 4 was our busiest route. Every morning we had 25 trips leave Mill Valley about every five minutes. Today we offer five trips and that's more than adequate. On the ferry side, overall ferry ridership today is 46% of pre-pandemic levels. Pre-pandemic, we offered 42 trips a day between Larkspur and San Francisco. Today we're offering 28 trips per day. And that's after adding several trips earlier this month due to some minor uptick in ridership. During the pandemic, we took over San Francisco to Angel Island ferry service. And coupled with that, using the same boat and crew, we now offer midday and weekend tipper on ferry service. Um, those are potential recreational markets that are doing well. In March, our group sales for Angel Island ferry tickets was 30% higher than the prior years. Um, with respect to revenues, since there's less travel in the quarter during the commute period, we're averaging still $1 million each week less in bridge tolls and transit fares. Fortunately, um, we have one-time federal COVID relief money to make that one-time money last as long as possible, we're offering a lot less service, which reduces our expenses. And so we're making that one-time federal money last as long as possible. We are in the customer service business, so as customers return, we incrementally add service. We first started, we started the Route 114 a year ago, we had four trips, now we're up to five trips in the morning. And uh, similarly, earlier this week, we added, earlier this month, we added three trips uh, to Tipperon service, or, excuse me, uh, large for service. So we have fewer staff than we did at the start of the pandemic. Our expenses are down, but we are still spending that one-time federal COVID relief money. Your CFO yesterday at the Finance Committee gave you an indication of how we're doing this year. And so our one-time federal COVID relief money should continue to last us for several years if we continue to be frugal and only offer service to meet customer demand. And I wanted to go through that because there's been a lot of press coverage about what a transit agency is doing. We have done a lot. We look radically different today than we did three years ago. Our regional bus service is about the same, you know, 23 hours a day from Santa Rosa to San Francisco and across the Richmond San Rafael Bridge, but our commute bus and our commute ferry is radically different. Um, hopefully the Giants have a good season because while people don't want to go to downtown San Francisco for work, we can easily sell out a ball game if it's the right team or if they're doing well. I will move on from that topic and uh, just talk briefly about a, a couple employees. We had one retirement since we last met and that's Darren Silvera in the bus division. He was a bus operator. And he retired after 27 years and 11 months and eight days of service with the district. So we wish him all the best in retirement. Then we have an employee of the month committee, which is not management, but it's employees who nominate their peers for the employee of the month. And this month, I'm proud to announce that the committee selected electrician Paul Mercurius as the bridge division or the district-wide employee of the month for April of 2023. 
He's recognized for going above and beyond uh, the call of duty, helping a colleague who has taken online classes uh, and learning how to do load calculations and all volunteer to help them. He stayed on his own time and spent a lot of time to make sure the co-worker was comfortable and would be able to complete the class and get their certification. He's very humble. He's a fabulous teacher. He's a, a great member of the team, and he always goes out of his way. His work ethic is second to none. He's a self-starter in every sense of the word, and uh, we're honored to have him as part of our team here in our electrical shop. He joined the district in April of 2014, and uh, prior to Joining us, he worked for several private companies as part of a member of IBEW Local 6 in San Francisco. He was born in Sacramento, attended Redwood High School in Larkspur, and he currently resides in Sausalito. He enjoys playing drums and guitar, hiking, kicking a soccer ball around, watching movies, gaming, and playing with Octo the cat. And the story behind Octo is that it's a stray cat that was rescued uh, from one of our bridge payment areas, and so uh, he adopted the cat. And with that, it concludes my report, and I'm available to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, yeah, I see a couple of, and uh, your hand was up, uh, Director Gospel first. Um, I'm just curious, with, I you know you've talked a lot about the reduced service um, in, in that example in Mill Valley. What, what would you say is the level of complaints from our writers right now about the lack of the reduced service? We only get complaints when we have uh, missed trips. Uh, and we had one trip recently for the 114 on uh, at uh, the uh, Spencer Avenue bus pad. But the 114 uh, complaint at the Spencer bus pad is the only complaint we've had about the amount of service. Um, but we do have occasions when we miss trips. And I should state that today we had an exceptional number of uh, drivers call in sick. So we missed a lot of trips this morning. And so we're likely to get some complaints today. Um, but the only time we've been getting complaints over the last year uh, since we added back to 114 is when we miss a scheduled trip. Um, you know, people are not going to San Francisco, so we're not getting complaints saying, how come you don't offer you know, more Route 114s? The honest answer is the Route 114, as that example, uh, has an okay load on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays. Uh, Mondays and Fridays, uh, we're grateful that we now pick up in San Francisco and we provide express bus service from the marina to downtown uh, because that's almost all, in some days, all the customers on some trips. Thank you. Thank you, um, Director Garbarino. Yes, thank you. I, I just wanted to thank you for highlighting Paul. And I believe that Paul, if I'm not mistaken, I'm actively searching for the picture, was the electrician who came with one of his colleagues to the Pelosi event, is that right? So there's two Pauls. Oh. Uh, Paul Paul <laughs> is the employee Pauls. of the month. <laughs> yeah. That's his nickname. Uh, so Tall Paul is the employee of the month. Okay. Yeah. I see. So uh, I think, it was the other Paul, yeah, who uh, I think was previously an employee of the month, uh, who's also a fabulous employee who was at the event. Who was at the event? Yeah, this is, is short Paul because yes. he's shorter than I am, so he's clearly short. <laughs> but lovely people, and they came on their own time to that event. So thanks. For sure. Are there other directors? With, um, uh, director director Walton Peters. Yes, I just wanted to follow up on uh, Dick's comment. Is the 114 picking up at Spencer? So we did do a switch in our last uh, um, sign up that we're revisiting. We did receive a complaint through you um, about uh, an, a customer who's displeased because it did affect the frequency at the Spencer bus pad. It was done to balance uh, service elsewhere. And so it is something we're revisiting. They raised a, a legitimate issue about uh, we went from 15 minute service to 30 minute service at that stop. Um, we did it for other operational reasons. Um, we don't have a lot of passengers that get on at that stop. You know, uh, each customer views it as their trip, but we don't run a bus or stop for just one person. It, sure. it, it impacts a lot of other people, um, but that is something that we are relooking because they did make some good points. Yeah, thank you. No, the Kamala Point Resort uh, staff and the Discovery Museum have reached out to me also. So thank you for that. And then I just wanted to observe uh, a couple months ago that SMART uh, went to a three day. Did you go to a three-day pass uh, for commute service, which I thought was right-sizing the service, and I just think it's something we might consider. And someday we may have different schedules for Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursdays mm -hmm. as compared to Monday and Fridays. Yeah. And we'll have to obviously work with our employees' representatives on that, um, but you know we may be headed there. Any other directors with uh, questions or comments for General Manager Mulligan? Uh, yes, Director Rabbit. Just to add, that's a preview of what you'll hear later with the results of the brainstorming uh, 
because that was one of the issues that came up looking okay. looking to right size and to right time um, schedules and uh, fair packages. So like on the, on the ferry side, our collective bargaining agreements allow us to schedule work with between five and 11 hours a day, as long as we give them a 40 hour work week. So we would have flexibility to modify things if it was you know, uh, mirroring uh, customer demand. And we're still waiting for downtown San Francisco to you know, rise up again as the Phoenix it is, as it always does, and to see what it looks like when that occurs. Um, so we wouldn't wanna make any um, you know, uh, short-term decisions that have long-term ramifications, but we're you know, clearly all options are on the table. Uh, Director Thier. Uh, yes, thank you for your report. Um, I had a question that actually just came to mind. Um, so if you can answer it, great. If not, uh, you can let me know later. Um, but I was wondering, in looking at the commuter service, um, how often are you assessing um, the ridership in order to make the changes? And so what I'm getting at is, you know, is this every three months? And you are looking at the numbers and making changes or every six months or every year. So we look at the numbers continuously. Okay. If you want, I can tell you how many people rode the eight o'clock ferry from Oxford to San Francisco this morning. Um, it's on my phone. Um, but uh, we adjust service four times a year. So every three months we make changes. Um, and we make changes based on where we see there's interest in customers. To be candid, there's much more interest in demand for our regional bus service than there is commute bus service. And so that's where we've been focusing our resources on the bus side. On the ferry side, uh, Larkspur seems to be growing faster than our bus for the commute service. Uh, recreational is uh, somewhat weather and uh, time of year dependent, but it seems quite strong. And so uh, there's lots of opportunities for more immediate growth on the ferry side for recreational tourism travel. But on the bus side, the growth really is uh, focusing on as we uh, hire more operators to increase frequency for the regional service uh, and to provide that much more frequent on the one one quarter as opposed to commute service because there's not people commuting into San Francisco for traditional um, office jobs like we saw historically. Thank you. Any other directors with comments or questions for General Manager Mulligan? I see none. Oh, so uh, thank you, General Manager Mulligan. Uh, next item is attorney's report. Uh, Mr. Manolius. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. My written report's before you. I'm happy to take any questions. There's no closed session today, so that's a bit of good news. Are there questions for Mr. Manolius? I see none, so we'll move right along to the engineer's report. Ms. Dara Furbush. There is a note here, do not touch microphone. Thanks. <laughs> uh, President Corio, members of the board, my written report before you, and I would like to highlight some projects that are described in my report. I would like to begin with the suicide deterrent construction. Uh, since, since my last month's report, uh, the net has been placed now on the west side of what we call the north back span of the suspension bridge. This is between no, the north tower and the north anchorage house. So today the net has been installed on the uh, majority of the suspension bridge, except for the east side of the north back span. And also uh, the net is yet to be installed on the south approach viaduct, for Point Arch, uh, main towers, and the east side of the north approach viaduct. Also, the contractor is working on the suicide deterrent system on the north anchorage housing that is different than anywhere uh, on the bridge. Uh, this is a 12 foot tall railing, and uh, today they install all the posts for the railing and they will have to grout them and plumb them and then they will proceed with installation of the uh, railing panels. Uh, so moving on to the toll plaza, plaza administration building ele elevator repairs. Uh, we, uh, California Department of Industrial Relations inspector visited the site, inspector the elevator, unfortunately, as the result of the heavy rains, 
the the water level, the groundwater level rise so hard that we have uh, a real problem with the water intrusion in the elevator pit. And uh, the inspector requested waterproofing uh, to prevent those intrusions and also to replace the existing uh, sump pump with a um, newer model. So our contractor got instructions to uh, search for at least two sub bits for the waterproofing. And it's not easy task because it seems like this type of contractors are very busy. Obviously, some other people have the same problem. Um, so with this, uh, we are in touch with Amoret because it most likely may will not be the uh, months where board can meet in our boardroom. Uh, moving on, um, you may notice when you drive across the bridge, you may notice a bunch of fellows with harnesses, and the, this is not people involved in the construction of the suicide deterrent. These are people who are involved in so-called road inspection. Um, to access different locations on the suspension bridge, we don't have catwalks, we don't have travelers to go everywhere. And every two years, under federal law, we have to um, inspect certain elements, critical elements uh, of the bridge uh, at the arm's length. So to do this, this is not the first time. Uh, on April 24th, our consultant, rope inspection consultant, mob mobilized on site and driving ac across the bridge every morning. You can, you can see them first congregating on the west sidewalk, and then they will be basically descending down on roads going to different places. Um, also, I want to uh, mention the project that we have uh, in cooperation with uh, David Rivera's Bridge Forces. Uh, we have installed, today the Bridge Forces installed the so-called Quick Deck Access Platform underneath the north end of the north back span. Um, this is in preparation to conduct uh, uh, removal of the lead paint and rust and rehabilitation of the paint. And um, Golden Gate Bridge, Toll Plaza building door and window rehabilitation. You may recall that we have to replace the front doors to the administration building. And also, uh, we will retrofit unopenable windows in people's offices. So if they wish to, they can basically uh, open the window and breathe fresh air. Um, uh, I'm pleased to say that uh, th this contractor will mobilize on site beginning next week. Um, I think they are already uh, procured the entry door. So this is important because to open the admin building for public meetings, we not only have to fit the elevator, but we have to have this entry operable uh, entry door. And finally, I would like to answer, I think Mr. Patel, he asked about how we're going to stage the paving job at the toll plaza. And this is very important to answer because as uh, as you know, we have an ongoing night work on the bridge for the suicide deterrent. And this is pretty elaborate traffic control, land closure, and so on. So we have developed a staging at the toll plaza uh, where we can have both lane closure operations to be independent. So they will not obstruct each other. Uh, to do this work is kind of tricky because we have to keep a uh, bridge open to traffic uh, at all times. So we divided the area south of the toll booth towards the, towards the Lincoln undercrossing into four stages. And same thing is the, we divided four stages on, uh, to the north of the, of the toll booth. And um, then there will be a 
quite a big portion, one of the stages for the southbound lanes, two of the stages, that you, if you can imagine from uh, toll booth four through eight, uh, this type of work north and south of the toll booth, we will be able to do during daytime because we will always have two uh, southbound lanes and all uh, northbound lanes open to traffic. So this can be done during day, and this is the, the quite substantial area that will be covered. However, what it's tricky are those southbound lanes uh, more s next to the administration buildings and those northbound lanes that are uh, adjacent to the exit to our parking lot. <coughs> These operations will be done at night, and they have to be done um, on Friday night. Uh, to just minimize any uh, problems that uh, public may experience because we will have to put in place certain details. And finally, the remaining part for the, for the uh, northbound south and north of the toll booth will be doing at night from Monday through uh, Thursday and from about 9 to 6 a.m. Um, so I hope that this is, yeah, and what what also we will do, like always, um, we will work with Paolo, so we will give public uh, well advanced notice what's happening and also <coughs> inform, inform the media on daily basis so people can plan in advance. And finally, I brought some. <laughs> so it is not the actual because uh, our our clip that will clip install on the bridge will look much nicer. Okay, so we have the proper international orange, and uh, the uh, this rubber infill that I mentioned will be cut to size, so it will not be sticking out. That that's the basically height of the clip. So what happens, it can be pushed onto the edge of the picket manually and will stay there. We will put a few drops of, uh, of glue just to make sure that people don't collect this as a souvenir. <laughs> but in a way, you notice, I think the trick is what we developed in the um, uh, wind tunnel, that you may see there is a second, certain angle here. And this thing does the trick. It's not flat like like the C shape, but it's slightly skewed. So it's it's very interesting how the airflow can be influenced by small changes in the shape. But anyway, and um, I probably should leave it here and maybe <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> So this is this is the clip. Um, so with this, I'll be happy to answer any question um, the board may have for me. Uh, it's slight, but that is the intrusion. So one of the aspects was how thick the material can be, the aluminum uh, wall. And uh, we <coughs> conducted the experiment, and uh, uh, it's, it's insignificant. So I see it comes to a point. Does that point go uh, northwest or southwest? <laughs> <laughs> so it, it alters. Oh, it, okay. Yes. yes. Because, because I, think I think the, the trick, trick is how we can interrupt the smooth flow. Any other questions? Okay, uh, seeing none, thank you, Ms. Barra Furbush. Um, that is it for our scheduled reports. Um, next item would be uh, the Building and Operating Committee. Uh, they met yesterday. Uh, the items coming before you today uh, were the subject of substantial discussion yesterday. 
Um, uh, Direct Chair Garbarino, would you uh, would you inform us about how things went yesterday? Thank you so much. And if anyone's wondering, this is Amaret's wonderful work. This is how we all get through. It's like having a little pinky. It's great. Thank you, Thank you so much. Um, and thanks to everyone for the discussion at yesterday's meeting. Uh, before I present item 8A1, I need to uh, turn things over to our attorney, Kim, uh, to provide a brief explanation about the protests we received for this item. Thanks, Kim. Sure. Thanks. Um, so there was a protest received from Gelati Brothers uh, as to the award to um, Argonaut, sorry about that. Um, and that protest was received on the 24th and was responded to on the 25th. And staff recommended that it be denied at that time. I just want to go really quickly through the protest. Uh, my colleague Nicole Witt went through it in detail yesterday. But the way these protests break down is you're looking at both responsiveness to the bid documents and responsibility of the of the bidder. And Gelati had made several allegations. Five of them were about responsiveness. And Three of those were really not very real as far as staff was concerned, and two of them were minor and were waivable, and that is uh, what the committee actually uh, eventually did yesterday. And the second piece of this is whether the bidder is responsible, and Gelati had suggested that Argonaut was not qualified to do concrete related work, and staff did not uh, think that was so. Um, so the what's before you today is a an, uh, a, a recommendation to award the contract to Argonaut and in so doing uh, 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 deny the um, the <laughs> protest by Gelati Brothers. Um, and so that you can do that in one vote, you can do that in two, but it's that's what is before the committee today. Thanks, Kim. President Terrio, with Kim's explanation, I would like to present the Building and Operating Committee's recommendation for the first item to reject that bid protest submitted by Gelati Brothers Incorporated relative to contract number 2022B114, Golden Gate Bridge Toll Plaza Pavement Overlay, and to award contract number 2022B14 to Argonaut Constructors of Santa Rosa in the amount of $3,024,389 and establish a construction contingency in the amount of $453,000, and to authorize an increase in the amount of $627,389 in the FY 2022-2023 Bridge Division Capital Budget for project number 1722 Toll Plaza Pavement Overlay, in concurrence with the Finance Auditing Committee and as detailed in the staff report, and I so move. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. There's a second. Um, is there a further board discussion bearing in mind we discussed this yesterday? Dr. And this question, have we dealt with as a district, have we had done business with Argonaut before? <laughs> yes. They most recently paved our Santa Rosa a bus uh, parking lot. And both contractors are great contractors. They're both local uh, union contractors that perform well. Any other uh, comment or discussion from members of the board on this item? Seeing none, Madam Secretary, uh, a roll call vote, please. Thank you. We're voting on item 8A1 with first and second, starting with Director Conroy, who's absent. Dorsey? Aye. Ingardio is absent. Garbarino? Aye. Judice? Yes. Grosbowl? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Mastin? is absent. Moulton Peters? Yes. Parr is absent. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni is absent. Safai? Aye. Snyder is absent. Stephanie? Aye. Deer? Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Tyria. Yes. Thank you. You have 13 eyes. 13 eyes. Motion passes. Chair Garbarino, um, keep on, please. Thank you. I would like to now present. Oh, yes. Uh, I have uh, on item two, I have a conflict of interest. So I'll be leaving the room and um, someone will get me <laughs> when it's time. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Please proceed. We will now present item 8A2 to authorize execution of the Seventh Amendment to Professional Services Agreement number 2017B15, Golden Gate Bridge Toll Gantry Design Services with ACOM of Oakland in an amount not to, to exceed $291,662.17 
for additional design services and establish a 10% contingency for the amendment of the, in the amount of $29,170 as detailed in the staff report as, and I so move. There is a motion. Is there a second? Yes. There is a second. Uh, any discussion in addition to yesterday's discussion on this particular item? I see none. So another roll call vote, please, Madam Thank Secretary. You. Voting on item 8A2, starting with Director Conroy is absent. Yeah. Dorsey? Aye. Ingardio is absent. Garbarino? Aye. Judice? Yes. Grosbol? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Mastin is absent. Moulton Peters? Yes. Parr is absent. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni is absent. Safai is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie? Aye. Thier is absent. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terrio? Yes. You have 11. 11, and the motion passes. Um, next item, please, Chair Gabriel. Um, I would now like to present item 8A3, which is to approve selection of the name Motor Vessel MV Alampali for the district's new ferry vessel and to authorize the official filing of MV Alampali with the United States Coast Guard as detailed in the staff report. Should I have waited? Okay. With the understanding that upon approval, staff will also be reaching out to seek permission to use the name Alampali. And I so move. Is there a second? Second. There, there, there's a couple of seconds there. <laughs> um, and um, uh, any discussion from the board on this? Uh, Madam, uh, yes, Director Hernandez. Thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I was at the meeting yesterday and um, appreciated the discussion. I am um, speaking today, and I, and I will vote in favor of uh, the recommendation. Um, but I just wanted to make a couple of comments. And when I got home after the vote, I was a little bit unsettled, um, although not, again, with any um, a reservation with the, with, the, with the name that was chosen by the committee and is being recommended today. But um, as the, the report, uh, the staff report reflects, the uh, uh, Ferry Division staff was consulted as to their opinions uh, and uh, their thoughts on three proposed names. The name that they selected is not the name that we chose and that is being recommended today. And I just wanted to um, express appreciation for the participation of all the marine, the uh, ferry division staff um, and their contributions to this uh, to the survey um, and to uh, say that uh, certainly from my perspective and I hope uh, from the rest of the colleagues here that we are not um, that the uh, the intent is not to dismiss the um, the collective opinion of the majority of the um, ferry division staff um, that there was a, a, a lengthy discussion with some very thoughtful comments and, and additional information uh, that was considered yesterday that led us to uh, choosing a name which was not the first preference of the ferry division staff. Thank you very much, Dr. Very good and thoughtful point, Director Hernandez, and thanks to the staff as well. Uh, Director Judy Chess here. Yeah, and I appreciate Director uh, Hernandez's comments as, as well, and I and I support that. Um, and and I just want to say thank you to the fellow directors. Uh, I, I feel passionate about you know recognizing and acknowledging uh, Indigenous people here in in this region, and, and so I thank the fellow directors for uh, for their notice. Are there any other directors with uh, comments or um, discussion on this matter? Uh, I see none. This item, because we are taking an action, uh, we took an action yesterday that was not specifically spelled out. Uh, that means uh, this item is available for public comment as well. Do we have anyone to comment uh, on this today from the public? No one in the room, so I'm going to ask Justine, do you have anyone who might want to speak on this item? I would be happy to pull and ask. Just give me Thanks. one moment. Is there anybody that would like to speak on this item? Please use star star to unmute yourself and let me know. I am not hearing anybody. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, so uh, no public comment. We already have a motion first and a second. Uh, then it's time for roll call vote. Thank you. Voting on item 8A3, starting with Director Conroy, who's absent. Dorsey? Aye. Ngardio is absent. Garbarino? Aye. Judice? Yes. Grosbol? Yes. Hernandez? Aye. Mastin is absent. Moulton Peters? Yes. Parr is absent. Rabbit? 
Aye. Radoni is absent. Safai is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie? Aye. Thier? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Terrio? Yes. Thank you. You have 12 ayes. 12 ayes. This motion also passes. Um, my uh, list of uh, things reminds me that uh, we uh, had another item from your committee yesterday. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I would also like to present item 8A4, which is to authorize award of managed services for the district Maximo Asset Management Software application relative to contract number 2023D12901 with A3J Group LLC of Tampa, Florida for a three-year base term with up to two additional one-year option terms for a total amount not to exceed $840,000 and to authorize award of on-call Maximo professional services for the district's Maximo asset management software application relative to contracts number 2023D-12902 to 2023D-12905 to A3J Group LLC Interlock Solutions Incorporated of Folsom, Maven Asset Management of Lux, Florida, and Z Pro Solutions Incorporated of Sacramento for a three year base term with up to two additional one year option terms for a total aggregate not to exceed amount of $750,000 for the five year term, as detailed in the staff report. And I so move. There was a motion. Is there a second? There's a second. Um, is there any discussion from members of the board on this item? I see none, so we'll get another roll call vote. Thank you. Item 8A4 with the first and second, starting with Director Conroy who's absent, Director Dorsey. Aye. Ingardio is absent, Garbarino. Aye. Judice. Yes. Grosbo. Yes. Hernandez. Aye. Mastin is absent, Moulton Peters. Yes. Parr is absent, Rabbit. Aye. Verdoni is absent. Safai is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie. Aye. Fear. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Yes. First Vice President Cochrane. Yes. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. That's 12 eyes. Thank you. 12 eyes. Again, this passes. Anything else, Madam Chair? Well, actually, I that almost concludes my report, but I have to, um, on behalf of my colleague, David, who sits on the smart board, uh, we got a message this morning from our GM, Eddie Cummins, that yesterday, 2000, I realize these numbers are relative on the little train that was built, but 2,666 road yesterday, which is a post-COVID record on ridership. So thanks for letting me Very good. derail. Now I'm done. Okay. Yeah. Thank you for that. Uh, so next we move along to the Finance and Auditing Committee. Um, Chair Rabbit, I, I made your task brief today. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that. First off, uh, thank you, President Terrio, for covering both the Finance Auditing uh, Committee and the OPEB uh, Trust Board meetings during my absence yesterday. <clears throat> I had a conflict. We had our budget workshop scheduled for this week at the county. Um, and I also know that Vice uh, Chair Parr is under the weather. So thank you very much for that. So at yesterday's committee meeting, I understand an item 8B2 uh, was continued to next month due to the need for clarifications to the independent auditor's engagement letter. So with that, we'll have one item for consideration today. Uh, the Finance Auditing Committee recommends approval of item 8A1, authorizing the execution of an extension of the line of credit with J.P. Morgan Chase Bank for the commercial paper program at a cost of 0.43% per annum uh, for a total cost of approximately $666,000 for the period of June 29th, 2023 through June 29th, 2025, as detailed in the staff report and I so move. There is a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. And there's a second. Uh, any discussion on this item? I see none. So we get another roll call vote. Thank you. And apologies, uh, Chair Rabbit. I put down 8A1. It should have been 8B1. <laughs> I, I read what's in front of me. I know. I'm sorry. I put it there. So I just wanted to call it out. <laughs> Thank you. That, that doesn't affect the motion itself, though, which is That's what it right. is. Yeah. <laughs> So we have a first and second, starting with Director Conroy, who's absent. Director Dorsey? Yes. Ingardio is absent. Garbarino? Aye. Judice? Aye. Grosbold? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Mastin is absent. Moulton Peters? Yes. R is absent. Rabbit? 
Aye. Rodoni is absent. Sapphire is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie. Aye. Beer. Aye. Second Vice President Hill. Aye. First Vice President Cochran. Yes. And President Terrio. Yes. Thank you. You have 12 eyes. 12 again, 12 classes. Um, Chair Rabbit, anything more? That's it. Thank you. Very good. Um, so on to the Governmental Affairs and Public Information Committee. Uh, it met this morning. Again, uh, there was a substantial discussion of the item uh, that is coming before you, Chair Cochran. Yes, take sir, it thank, away. Thank you, President Chair Hall. Uh, the Government Affairs and Public Information Committee would like to present item 8C1, which is recommendations regarding the discussion and support uh, of Brown Act bills, uh, SB, uh, SB 537 and AB 817, and also move that. And is there a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, is there a uh, board discussion on this item? I see none. Uh, because this item two, uh, the specific action taken was not publicly noticed uh, in advance. Uh, this is also subject to public comment here. Do we have any? I'll look to the back to see if there's anybody here who would like to speak on this. Okay, I have no speakers in the room. Justine, do you have anyone on the, can you poll to see if there's anyone who would like to speak on this item? Absolutely. Good morning. Is there anyone who would like to speak on this item? Please use star star to unmute yourself. I'm not hearing any speakers for this item. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there being no speakers, then um, we get a roll call vote. All right, you got it. Thank you. We're voting on item 8C1, starting with Director Conroy's absent. Dorsey. Yes. And Guardio's absent. Garbarino. Aye. Udiche? Aye. Grosbowl? Aye. Hernandez? Aye. Mestin is absent. Moulton Peters? Aye. Parr is absent. Rabbit? Aye. Rodoni is absent. Sapai is absent. Snyder is absent. Stephanie? Aye. Beer? Aye. Second Vice President Hill? Yes. First Vice President Cochran? Yes. And President Giro? Yes. Thank you. Sold. Uh, <laughs> 12. <laughs> 12. 12 we pass. Um, okay. Uh, anything uh, more for us, uh, Chair Cochran? No. That uh, concludes my report, President. Thank you. Uh, and so that's it for these action items. Um, next, we move along to a special order of business, uh, the one to which Mr. Toward, toward which Mr. Popal has been looking uh, forward. Um, and um, it's the strategic planning brainstorming advisory subcommittee reports. Let me give a little prelude to them. Um, we, the, the strategic planning advisory committee established four very small um, brainstorming advisory committees uh, that were tasked just with coming up with ideas and without testing them very hard at all against the against against notions of practicality, uh, just things that they thought the bridge ought to do, uh, and uh, knowing that at a later date, uh, after the the um, uh, after the district staff had been through the the ordeal of the budget uh, for this year. Um, we would then uh, both have the uh, staff available to advise us on uh, practical aspects uh, of the um, of the of the ideas, both fiscally and and otherwise. Uh, and so. Um, we are just at a, at a stage in this thing of collecting ideas in a wide open manner, um, and knowing that we will uh, we will um, we will uh, look at them more rigorously uh, as time goes by and as as uh, um, we um, we free staff from other obligations. Uh, um, so, um, with that, uh, I will start with. Um, Director Hernandez, who chaired the Brainstorming Advisory uh, Subcommittee on Labor and Employer Relations. If you would please. Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, colleagues, uh, the uh, Labor and Employment Brainstorming uh, Subcommittee was comprised of myself as chair, Director Mastin, Director Parr, and Director Tier. We had uh, two formal meetings and uh, several subsequent discussions uh, with council. We were um, joined in this uh, journey and supported by um, our district council, Kimon Manolias, uh, to help us with this. Um, 
we had several different uh, topics that we discussed, lots of uh, interesting conversations. Um, summary of, of what we discussed could come under a few different umbrellas, one being um, uh, to build trust and foster mutual respect between district leadership staff, labor partners, uh, and to increase opportunities for engagement uh, between district divisions. Um, we also um, wanted to prioritize uh, improving workplace conditions uh, for our employees overall and um, and to evaluate what kinds of ways uh, we could increase employer participation and decision making processes uh, for more direct input toward that goal. Um, there were several other areas uh, that uh, that we discussed in lots of in lots of detail. Um, but one of the other things we kept coming back to was uh, increasing the uh, visibility of our employees within the district and within the public, uh, both as a way to demonstrate appreciation for all of our employees and what they do um, with the recognition that the district really is its employees. Uh, so uh, that's just a, 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 an overview, a general overview. There was certainly much more detail. We were happy to provide uh, a, a pretty extensive list, I think, to uh, to uh, to the president for uh, for the next levels of discussion and dealing with this, with those uh, that input, so uh, the committee appreciates the opportunity to have the input uh, in the strategic process, and thanks the chair and the staff for taking our our work product uh, on to the next steps. Thank you. Thank you, Chair Hernandez. I will note that uh, uh, we were very clear that the purview of the of this particular uh, uh, brainstorming advisory subcommittee uh, did not cl include. Items that would be matter a matter of negotiation uh, between the district and its labor organizations. Um, uh, the next topic was uh, revenue and expenditures, and uh, 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 Director Rabbit uh, chaired that brainstorming subcommittee. Uh, Director Rabbit. Yeah, thank you, President Gerio. Uh The revenue and expenditures strategic plan subcommittee uh, consisted of myself, uh, Bob Barb Parr, uh, Jerry Cochran, and Chris uh -huh. Snyder. Uh, we met a couple of times uh, and followed up with some email exchanges as well. Um, it was truly a brainstorming exercise, <clears throat> excuse me, and the ideas listed uh, were not at all prioritized. Uh, basically, if you could think of an idea that could generate revenue to the district or shave expenditures, uh, it went on the list. Um, and the list, I think, at this point is about 36 items in total. A sample of some of the things uh, discussed. Once again, the old debate of charging for pedestrians and bicyclists on the bridge. Um, <laughs> dynamic pricing on bus routes, something that was referenced a little bit earlier, considering again, the three or four day transit commute passes and how that might bolster ridership. Docent led bridge tours. Uh, I think our general manager knows well that one. Uh, sponsorships in general. Um, Vista Point legislation fix so that we could charge for parking. Uh, sales tax measure for tolls, a regional con contribution to operations, uh, whatever RM4 looks like and how the bridge could actually um, be involved in that and benefit from it. Um, solar installations, cell installations, uh, you name it. Uh, I think there, uh, the consensus was there's not one silver bullet kind of thing, but maybe a combination of all of these things on both sides of the ledger can get us back into a uh, more fiscally sound uh, place going forward. So appreciate the uh, opportunity and look forward to the continued discussion under your leadership. Thank you, uh, Chair Rabbit, uh, and thank you for your work and, and also to uh, Director Hernandez for hers. Uh, the next topic was uh, bridge and transportation. Uh, D Director Hill uh, chaired that uh, brainstorming subcommittee. Uh, Director Hill. Thank you. Uh, well, I have on this is a job we do transportation. So we, so we have a wide range of comments and questions and things like that. One thing that was a very large theme in what we we're discussing was the effect of climate change and, and the movement towards electrification and all that goes with that. Um, we had a total of 40 ideas that were listed, so I am not going to read them to you. But generally speaking, um, uh, some of the ones that, that, that dealt with um, is uh, trying different ideas and approaches uh, to service on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Where, where did we hear that before? That's kind of a, a common one. I do have to say, we were, we were um, asked not to consider the, valid, the validity 
of these things just to put them on the paper. So there's a lot of things that you're going to say, oh, I'm going to in hell, you know, but, but um, there's a, the world will be different 20, 30 years from now. I think we all know radically different. So something that is a bad idea today may be different tomorrow. So it, it often get on the list. We talked about uh, ranging from uh, movement to smaller buses uh, and, and a different um, idea of using um, um, automated um, local pickup to a transit system, something like that, um, where, where instead of doing the last mile with your own car to go somewhere, that you have a, that you have a, a system where you, you're picked up and it's, it's a computerized system that knows how to get there quickly and deliver you to the transit center. Um, things like, uh, um, uh, are there five premium routes, uh, higher fare box recovery rates that industry could operate? For instance, Muir Woods, uh, doing that is a different thing. Um, um, opportunities to expand transit parking. The, the, one of the interesting things about it is, is the more successful we are on transit, the fewer people will travel over the bridge and, and, and vice versa. So we, we kind of have a, an interesting thing uh, that, we had, that we tried to, to deal with in those areas. Um, let's see, um, um, I talked about last mile, uh, we need to, oh, the district's funding model. Is there another way to make funding objectives? Uh, and those were covered by you, Director Rabbit. Um, I think at least two of them we, we discussed the same issue with. Uh, and um, we were looking at, uh, looking at using um, transponders to be able to set up a different fare charging system for people uh, traveling in. For example, uh, and I'll use this example, uh, my insurance company, I didn't bring this up, but I could get clear on that. Uh, does I have put a transponder and they can read everything off of the computer on the engine. So you can, you can start charging for a variable algorithm rather than the, the standard fare right now. And it, would, I mean, it would include certainly equity and things like that too. So that's, a, that's kind of one that's out there so that obviously dealing. So um, I think that I, I could go on and on, but uh, it mentions Alexander Avenue too. So, so that I'll just leave it, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chair Hill. Um, the fourth topic was uh, environment and climate change, uh, including uh, both preventing climate change and adopting to it. Um, uh, Director Garbarino, uh, Chair of that committee, Director Garbarino. Thank you very much and uh, thank you for the opportunity, but I also need to very much thank my colleagues who were on the committee, are on the committee with me, Stephanie and Dick and Holly and Elizabeth for helping us to stay um, congealed and um, document all of our discussion. Uh, we had two very successful meetings and our second meeting where we were uh, prioritizing what I will list as our groupings of issues uh, really kind of became, um, well, first of all, everything became a priority, but we staged things. So while something might have a one or a two or a God bless it, a 4.5 uh, in one to five, um, being most important, least important, um, we saw them as rolling out. So our first, isn't that right? Yeah, he's, so. he's got a copy of this too, so in case I missed something. I'm doing wonderful. Oh, lovely. Um, so um, could the staff please report what measures the district uh, has already implemented to respond to climate emergencies. And then there are four subsettings there, and the priorities in that arena range from one to, again, uh, 4.5. And I won't detail those, but I can give you Dick's copy if you're interested. Um, the next was could involve the public in developing new ideas and solicit their input, obviously. And that was a priority one um, and had three bullets to it as well. Um, and if my colleagues on the committee have any adjustments to this, let me know. Uh, the next arena was could consider how current and projected ridership trends could affect the district's approach to vehicles and ask the question, could the district perhaps do more or something differently? And a lot of that came out of Michael's presentation too, although it's not a vehicle, but the presentation on Norway and um, ferries, which was wonderful. And that has three bullets and a priority one. The next uh, was to conduct a study of various power sources 
including electric, hydrogen, other alternatives for all of our modes, ferries, buses, and other arenas at the district. That also got a priority one and has two bullets. The next is could promote more bicycle use. Sorry, Bert, that got a priority two, um, but I'm sure we meant one. <laughs> yeah, right? So, and that had two bullets, but that we knew had your support and our chairs, so it will go forward as a one, I'm sure, in the future. Uh, the next uh, could develop a long-term alternative energy plan for buses, ferries, and other, and that had two bullets. Um, and that had a priority five. And again, I have to repeat that the reason for that is that that will come after all of the other discussions that were mentioned. And so to move on to the implementation phase, um, could educate the public and display large posters with information about the energy used, carbon offset benefits and so forth, a la something I saw some time ago on an Amtrak train that had a priority of 3.5, could further collaborate with Marin Transit that had a 2.5 could promote the climate benefits of a slower ferry. That didn't have any priority at all, but I'm sure it would be very popular with people who need to get to work. Um, the next one is uh, could utilize community-based social marketing to promote certain ideas and motivate and change behavior. And that had priority four, as did the next one, could have a staff member de uh, dedicated to energy and climate practices but only priority four because it was something we saw as down the road just a bit and rolling out. In, again, this was the implementation phase. Thank you. And uh, thank you, Chair uh, Carbarino, uh, for your work. Uh, President Terriel, uh, yes. I forgot to mention my partners. Can I do that? Uh, could, please. Thank you. I apologize, uh, Stephanie, uh, um, Molten Peters, and Dennis Rodoni. And I apologize for. Walking right over that. Thank you. There we go. Um, so uh, it was mentioned um, uh, public engagement and, and the Strategic Planning Advisory Committee definitely wants to have uh, a public uh, a public engagement. We we're talking about exactly how and when to go about that. Um, but I would expect something in the not too distant future, very near future. Um, then, uh, so with that, uh, with that uh, spelled out and with the um, uh, and with the uh, word that this is all very preliminary and that we'll have plenty of opportunity to discuss this in great detail uh, and more knowledgeably in the future. Are there uh, members of the board who wish to uh, comment or, or ask questions on this? I see none. Uh, we do have, I do have noticed that uh, uh, Mr. Pilpel uh, wants to make public comment on this. Mr. Pilpel. Thanks, David Pilpel again. Um, again. Um, I have a lot of detailed thoughts, but not a lot of time. So I just really wanted to focus on the bus division uh, in particular and the vision and services and facilities. I, For me, and there's a lot more that, that we could talk about, and I'm sure we will in the, the fullness of time. But for me, the key question is, do you go bigger? Do you go smaller? Or do you stay about where you are now? and retain flexibility. And as that plays out the way I see it, going bigger would mean um, being the operator, not necessarily the planner, but the uh, scheduler and the operator for all service uh, north of the bridge, um, taking over, taking back more of the service that Marin Transit uh, operates and um, becoming the operator for Sonoma County Transit, Santa Rosa City Bus, uh, Petaluma Transit, really being the entity uh, north of the bridge, probably having a larger facility uh, in Santa Rosa, um, et, et cetera. It, it has a lot of implications. Being smaller is really adjusting to what you're operating now, a very limited uh, commute uh, service, the continued operation of the, the basic service, and uh, such operations as Marin Transit uh, wants you to operate uh, by contract. Um, and that would be a smaller footprint, might involve uh, getting out of District 2 in Novato, um, maybe even District 3, uh, or sorry, Division 3 uh, in Santa Rosa. It has other implications by going uh, smaller, um, perhaps having less uh, support staff uh, ultimately, but it, it has 
a, a lot of implications because you've got uh, economies of scale when you've got field supervisors and, and people going to Santa Rosa and whatnot if you're operating less service and, and if the vision is to um, operate uh, less service, you've got less to, to spread those uh, fixed and overhead uh, costs over. And the third is really to just stay where you are now with the, the fleet size and the facilities that you have with the uh, understanding that it's difficult to project with the uncertainties that um, exist now in, in San Francisco downtown and elsewhere within the service area, what the ridership projections and what the service demand is, is going to be in five or 10 years. And so I, I see those three uh, scenarios, go big or go smaller or stay about where you are now, as being a critical uh, question for the strategic financial plan. Happy to provide uh, other input in the future. Thanks for listening. Uh, Madam Secretary, do we have anybody else from the public who wishes to comment on this? Justine, do you have any speakers for this item under item number 10A? Let me check. Let me Thank, you. Thank you. Is there anybody who has a comment on this item this morning? Please use star star to unmute yourself and let me know. Anybody with public comment on this item? Okay, I'm not hearing anybody. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Brock. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Uh, that will do it for this item. Um, we have no unfinished business today. We have no new business. Uh, there are communications uh, that were noted to the board. Uh, copies are available. Uh, I would ask for actually ask for one, the one from um, Tom Shea Jr. If you would. You got it. Um, and um, the only other item remaining for us is oh. adjournment. Is there a motion and a second for that? Mm -hmm. Motion. And I hear a second over there. Um, so, uh, anyone object to uh, to adjourning? Uh, you know, I, yes. I don't object to adjourning, but I, I would just like to uh, invite colleagues to uh, join me in in well in uh, recognizing that today is Workers Memorial Day, day for remembrance and action for workers killed, disabled, injured, or otherwise harmed uh, by their work. Thank you. Um, with that noted uh, and in mind, and also in honor of. Roger Ools, uh, as requested by former bridge captain Mike Licati. Uh, Roger Ools was a former bridge lieutenant. Uh, uh, in honor of Wendy Valdez, mother of chief painter Robert Valdez. And in honor of Bruce Belding, as requested by uh, Director Rabbit. Um, I'd ask for a moment of silence for Jeremy. Thank you. This meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.